Hey, how's it going everybody? Sean here for another edition of Sean Solo and today I want to talk to you guys about Quantum Break. Yeah, I know it came out a while ago. I know. But it was an Xbox One slash Windows 10 exclusive because there's really no such thing as Xbox One exclusives anymore. Uh, but recently, as of last week, at the time of this recording, October 7th, 2016, um, it was released on Steam, and you could play it on Windows 7, 8, you know, they kind of unlocked it from the Windows 10 requirement for your PCs. And I was super excited about it. I had no idea that was happening. Kind of came out of left field. I was really bummed. I mentioned, uh, it was a few months ago, I did a kind of a short video about how much I dislike console exclusivity in the modern era. You know, I think it's just everybody kind of loses in that respect. I mean... I don't know. I understand why, like I said, I understand why companies do it. I understand why developers engage in that stuff because, you know, Microsoft slash Xbox paid probably a pretty penny to remedy for this timed exclusivity. But I feel like there must have been a threshold for sales because they've this game has been unlocked, basically, and now you can buy it on Steam and, and play it, which was cool for me. I was super excited about it. I am a huge fan of Remedy as a developer. I grew up playing the Max Payne games, you know, 1 and 2. Uh, you know, 3 was made by Rockstar. A game I actually still kind of like, but uh, not made by Remedy. And Alan Wake, even American Nightmare. I enjoyed all those games. Um, especially Alan Wake. Alan Wake, I f thought was a really good game. Uh, just because it's interesting. It's like, you know, a third-person action kind of adventure game. Horror kind of weird, quirky, Twin Peaks-ish kind of tone to it. Uh, that Remedy kind of excels that, in my opinion. And uh, this time they're taking on kind of a more of a straight-up science fiction time travel story. Um, and they added some new elements, which I'm sure everybody's aware of. Like, they add this thing where there's a TV show that is kind of you watch while you're playing the game. Uh, so you play, like, a part or a chapter, an act of the game and then you watch like a 25 minute episode of TV and the TV is supposed to show you kind of the other side of the coin. It shows you what some of the people that work for this uh, mysterious corporation are doing and uh, what their lives are like and what their stories are. So it's kind of like trying to give you all sides of the story, like every dimensions so you can have sympathy or empathy for the things that are going on for everybody. Um, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to keep keep it spoiler free for the first half the second half I might get into some spoilers uh, just because it's been out for a while now and I feel like and if I tell you that I'm going to spoil it well there you go there you go motherfucker uh, so my initial impressions of this game are it's okay uh, I mentioned uh, Alan Wake before it feels like a game definitely feels like a remedy game like Alan Wake uh, but I would say Alan Wake is probably overall more of a successful endeavor I think they they were able to kind of bridge this kind of weird like episodic storytelling uh, in a way that just made just flowed better in Alan Wake and a lot of people have pointed pointed to because I mean that's Remedy's kind of just they're tinkering with storytelling in games that's kind of their thing and they're just like um what's uh, Quantic Dream uh, the French developer there like just like you know the games like Heavy Rain and uh, was it Beyond and, and Fahrenheit, like, uh, they're just trying new things with uh, narrative in video games and trying to use the things that are unique to video games in uh, narrative talent, storytelling. Uh, it's not as successful because this game is supposed to have, like, branching paths and whatnot, like, and that even even some of these branching paths even are affected in the, the live action portion. So depending on what you kind of do, like, you may have, like, a scene extra in an episode... Than if you didn't do something or interact with something, or if you didn't get a piece of information, so it kind of gamifies it in the sense that you're always going to be on like these clue hunts, because they have these things that are literally called I think they were the, like narrative pieces, and which are basically like the emails and whatnot uh, that you can pick up off computers or PDF or like little people's personal iPad type devices and you can read their emails you can read like kind of what all the characters are up to and that's actually where you get the bulk of the story uh, if you want to like have a, a deeper experience if you don't read those things you're actually missing pr about like you're gonna miss like about 50 percent 
of the story in terms of like motivation. Like you don't under you're not going to understand where most of the characters are coming from if you don't engage with that stuff, uh, which was kind of weird. And I I did not I didn't like that. I mean, granted, I'm the type of person I went through and looked and found everything, but I like it felt like kind of cheap and out of date to have that stuff be sequestered to like what essentially is like diary entries, right? Like if we were playing Resident Evil or if you're playing kind of the Bioshock games or the System Shock, like that's kind of where those things came from, where you'd read diary diary entries of like what people had gone through or and kind of like told you how the characters feel. Like I said, it's their backstory. Uh, it's their motivation for a lot of the characters, like a lot of the side characters, the NPC characters mostly. Um, and to have that stuff not organically woven into the story was a little jarring, especially considering the fact that there is a live action show companion, which kind of felt superfluous. Um, and you, I mean, granted, like you get like a different side of the story, but it doesn't feel like it adds that much, surprisingly. Even though you get to you watch half-hour episodes of a TV show, like three or four episodes, and it doesn't feel like it adds much um, at the end of the day. Yeah, so that was, it was kind of strange. I mean, it's in the TV show, people have criticized for being kind of cheap. It looks like a sci-fi channel kind of show. Uh, I, I'd have to agree with that. Uh, but to me, I can suspend my disbelief. I was, like, okay with that. Like, I could just get over it and just watch watch the program like it didn't bother me as much as it bothered some people i guess to have to sit there and watch an episode of tv uh even like i would say like about halfway through i was even kind of looked forward to it. i was like oh cool like i'll have some lunch and watch this thing because i i beat this in a day i beat it the day i bought it went downloaded it started like took a break in the afternoon came back that night played it to like two or three in the morning ended up beating it um but I wanted to look forward to the episodes. Like, I think it's a cool idea. And I wish there was just, like, it was just more meaningfully built into the actual game itself. It just, like I said, it kind of feels superfluous. It doesn't feel like it needs to be there. Like, if, if the episodes were cut out, you would you would notice a little bit. Because, like, some characters would definitely seem like, well, how the fuck did they get there? But there's nothing that you couldn't solve, like, doing... Uh, you know, in a diary entry like they were did in the game or just doing an in-game cutscene. And I think that's, like, you know why, like I said, the direct comparison I had was for Alan Wake. Because Alan Wake it plays out like a kind of a TV show, like a season of TV, and I think it's pretty successful in, like, imitating that. Um, and I thought, like, the storytelling was just, first of all, I think this just baseline, the storytelling was just better, more interesting in Alan Wake. Um, but it does... It does take you out of the game a little bit when you know to have to stop and watch an episode, even though I wasn't that bothered by it. Um, but for some reason, Alan Wake just works better, and I don't have a good explanation as to why, other than just the storytelling is better, it's just more interesting. Because Quantum Break has got cool, I love uh, time travel stories. This has a kind of a neat time travel story. I um, that I really kind of enjoyed. I mean, it's very, like, predictable. It's exactly kind of what you would expect. I was able to kind of put the pieces together way before the game, way before the game, like, wanted me to, or had intended me to, just because I, if you're really familiar with science fiction, like, a lot of the stuff is going to be real rote. Real rote. Like, if you have any type of familiarity with science fiction, especially time travel stories, it is, like, the quintessential time travel-esque type of story. Um, but it doesn't mean it's not cool. Like, I did enjoy the ride for the most part. Uh, it's kind of like, like most, like most time travel stories, like, it kind of falls apart at the end because time travel is just, it's kind of built on paradoxes and if you can't, paradoxes are never going to, you're never going to be able to like really make sense of them, but you have to, if you can distract people from, in an entertaining way enough from like, the absurdity of it or the inconsistencies, whatever, how, what, however you want to put it. Like if you can kind of distract people enough from that, like that's kind of the best you can do for a science fiction. There's really no way to properly really, really like kind of, um, ever explain it. There's too many, too many questions. that's kind of pose. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and this is a pretty basic time travel story. Like I said, still kind of cool 
Uh, I wish they had delved into so they talk about some really interesting things and never really show you, and you never really do anything with it. Uh, some of those things that I felt were more interesting. Um, mechanically, the game, uh, some people didn't like the shooting and stuff like that. Like, I think it's a, it's completely serviceable. It doesn't do anything to break the mold, really. Uh, it's better mechanically, like, it's a little tighter than, like, Alan Wake, just by comparison of another Remedy game. Because they've never... I don't think people have ever really thought that they're... Mechanically, their games have been amazing. Outside of Max Payne. And Max Payne, it was just because it was the bullet time thing was kind of a revolutionary at the time. And bullet time was... Uh, made it so they didn't have to worry about cover like it's it's a like that's and that's actually a problem when rockstar did uh max Payne 3 you could take actively like take cover so it became like a third person cover based action shooter but in the older games the cover was actually the bullet time like you would use the bullet time instead of like hopping into cover um but anyway, so this one it has like a time mechanics, and you can like upgrade your guy and like upgrade your time mechanics and stuff by doing these very gamey kind of uh, like hunting, like kind of a, I don't know how to describe it, like an Easter egg hunt type thing where you're just looking for these uh, I don't know these time fragments <laughs> that give you your points. I can't remember what the material is called. Like that's the thing. I played this like a week ago last weekend. And it's already kind of... Some of those specifics are already kind of fading from my memory. Um, so that's... You know, that'll tell you, I guess. It's a little ephemeral. It's a little forgettable. Um, but overall, I find that stuff pretty serviceable. And But that's not really why I come to Remedy Games. I, I guess, you know, some people... If, if you don't know who they are as a developer, you might come and just be disappointed on a basic level. And I wouldn't begrudge somebody, like, being disappointed in this game. Uh... Especially because the story ends up not holding up very well. Uh, in like I said, under any amount of scrutiny, it doesn't matter. Like time travel game, uh, stories are just there's inherent problems to just using it as a narrative device, and this game does not address any of them or do a very good job of I don't know figuring it out. I suppose. Like you know, it's a good example. Like uh, there's this movie called Looper, and uh, it's a time travel movie. You should, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's really, really great. It's entertaining. But the time travel stuff in that movie makes no fucking sense. Uh, they even kind of address that in the movie that it makes no fucking sense. And But the movie is so good that you don't care. Quantum Break does not do that. So, okay, I'm going to get into... Uh, so, I would... You know, to me, like if you're a fan of Remedy, if you liked Alan Wake and you haven't had a chance to play this yet... I would say give this a go. Maybe don't buy it. It's already, it's already discounted. It's already 40 bucks. It's already cheaper than it was when it came out. Um, for me, it was worth the money. Like, I enjoyed the time I spent with it, even if it wasn't the most memorable experience I've ever had. I would still... I would give it a tepid... Tepidly give it kind of a, a recommend based on... If you like science fiction, time travel stuff, you generally like Remedy games... I'd say it's worth worth your time. If you're kind of more of the casual gamer, you're looking for like a third person action shooter, like this is not that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not even hard enough to really like even give you even any challenge either. It's like played it on normal and I blew through it. Like I said, I blew through it in a day. It's not at all challenging. And it can it kinda of does that same that shooter thing where you like you go to area to area and then you're in an arena and it's like defeat all the enemies. And then you defeat all the enemies in the room and then you move on like that's really all it does that's mostly what the, the main <laughs> the gameplay parts if you're not like just traversing in a, kind of a, on a linear path like you go into rooms and you fight a bunch of dudes and then you move on that's that's the gameplay loop it's the gameplay loop and it's not great but anyways here so I'm getting into some minor spoilers here um so the storyline itself is... its I thought it was kind of interesting. Like, this guy like creates this time machine. And you're the protagonist character, your player character. His brother is somehow involved in it. And and it does some interesting stuff with just time travel. And, like, your buddy ends up getting, like... Acts, like, goes to the wrong part and place in time. And 
ends up like having a bad experience and like comes back kind of like and then you like meet him again in the present time and like he's like a bad guy like it's cool there's some cool stuff in there um he saw the end of time and he's now doing something to try to save the human race because time is going to break down as a consequence of them fucking with the time of time itself so it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy um and then there's two brothers, like the, the player protagonist and then his brother. And they're kind of like trying to stop it. And there's some interesting stuff, timeline stuff, where they're like his brother's trying to stop it in the past while you're trying to stop it in the present. And you're trying to like rebuild the time machine yourself so you can kind of go forward. And then you have like a few other side characters with you um, along for the ride to add some interesting more dimensions. Uh, like it's. I wanted to like this game. I wanted to like the story a lot more than I did. Um, it just doesn't add up to anything very satisfying. And then at the end of the game, you have this really shitty boss fight that like is so weird. And then there's not even like a final episode of the series of the show. You just get like, and then there's like a cliffhanger for a sequel bait thing, which is something Remedy always does. They did that with Alan Wake as well, um, to a sequel that never actually ended up coming out. And I think Quantum Break is going to be very similar in that vein. Like, they're really swinging for the fences on this stuff, and they don't... They just always... I Just, like, people don't connect with it. Like, they spend... They're too expensive. Like, Quantum Break is a, looks like a very expensive game. Uh, a very expensive experiment. And, like, it's the kind of thing that's going to break their studio at some point. Like, if this doesn't break their studio, like, I don't know. And it's too bad, because I really like... The characters, I mean, not the characters, I really like that studio, I really like their kind of philosophy, I really like their kind of like their the face of the company, Sam Lake, is very entertaining, uh, interesting guy, and he's got like a lot of cool ideas about what he wants to do, but I think sometimes his ambition goes far beyond his actual ability at times, sometimes, um, but yeah, so the performances and stuff by the, uh, the actors, are, it's like okay, it's serviceable couple dudes from The Wire, Game of Thrones as well, Aiden Killen, I believe his name is, he's like the bad guy, Paul, like I can't, like, I'm trying to remember their fucking names, I barely even remember their names, <laughs> it's just so bad, I wish I had talked about this like right after I played it, uh, so I could be a little more specific about the story, because it's, 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 it's a time travel story, so it's super convoluted, so if you've never, if you haven't played the game, you have no fucking idea what I'm talking about, so I need to speak as if you've played this game at because if I try to explain this to you, it just sounds convoluted. And it is a little convoluted. It gets a little much. And they're supposed to, like, th and they have these things, like, you meet this, uh, this woman character that was, like, for her entire life, she's been waiting for this moment. And, like, because, and then you find out later in the game that she got sent back to the past and ended up talking to herself as a little girl to warn her, to get tell her to get ready for this. Again, another like self fulfilling prophecy, another loop. Uh, it does engage in the in the time travel that's my favorite, which is like no matter, which is a little fatalist. It's like you can't change the past. Anything you do in the past has already happened. So if I have a time machine and I go back in the past and I try to say like use internet's famous famous wanna include thing, Hitler. Say I want to kill Hitler. Anything I do to try to kill Hitler is actually, uh, you know, earlier on. So I want to kill him when he's a kid. Anything I do to try to kill Hitler always happened, and I obviously failed. And uh, it, what I did maybe even informs, like, the person that he becomes. So, like, I could have made him really, like, get into occultism or hate Jews. That could be my fault. Because of something I did trying to, trying to do a good thing, but it just never works out that way. Uh, and I, and it deals with deals with time travel at least into the past in that in that capacity. And I actually really enjoyed that. Like I like that kind of storytelling. I like because it also makes for a little bit of neater time travel stories in the sense that like there's less loose ends. Like everything has like a loop. Everything has like a loop that closes at some point. Uh, this game, I'm trying to think of, like, where it goes off the rails in, in terms of, like, the time travel aspects. Uh, like, it, well, first of all, it doesn't... It, 
like it's leaving the possibility open like that you can change the past somehow at the end that's like the cliffhanger like there's a girl a female character ends up dying and she's but you can still go in the past and the main character wants to go back and save her basically because they there's this convoluted romance where some for some reason they like they're in love with each other it doesn't really make very much sense <laughs> honestly because they've spent like 10 hours together because the whole game takes place within like a two day period I think um, and a lot of like these ripple effect things that you can find that are supposed to I don't know change the story up don't really add anything that significant if you missed them all you wouldn't really be missing anything and that's the kind of a problem with something like this and that's a problem because of the cost of production they don't want to create something that like half of the players will never see they don't want to do that. So any changes end up being really minor. Because why would they, like, create a game, like, or, or even less than that? Say they, they created a whole section of the game only 20% of people saw. They're, like, not willing to do that. Uh, and that will always hold back kind of these branching narrative-type games. Because, uh, like I said, no matter what you do, who you talk to, no matter what choices you, you pick, the differences in the game are incredibly minor. And in the TV show, so minor that you might not even notice them. Um, yeah. I don't know, so that was kind of a shitty spoiler section, but... Like I said, I wish I had done this earlier, because it's already fading from my memory. Already! And I didn't hate the game! Like, I didn't hate it. Like, I wasn't... I was disappointed, I guess? But maybe not so much, because I had already kind of heard the word of mouth was not great about the game. But I'm a huge fan of the developers, so I wanted to support them. And I wanted to try it for myself. It's something that I would be willing to pony up some cash to experience myself. And I'd say, like, I feel like I got my money's worth. I don't think that's going to be true for everybody, obviously. Um, it's definitely one of those things I, I, like I said, I tepidly recommend it. And only... It's only a must-buy at, like, say, full price for... Remedy diehards or people that just are interested in something that's like different. It's a little different. Not maybe not different enough. Actually, would be would be my like a very broad criticism. I know, but that might be it's great. It does not take enough chances. Like if you really wanted to do some like weird narrative experiment, like just, I wish they had swung for the fences. And they kind of don't. They kind of don't. But uh. Okay, well, that's going to do it for me. I'm Sean, and I will talk to you guys next time. I got something to talk about.